Welcome back. This is lesson two in which we'll create a programme to carry out the bubble sort. Remember how the bubble sort works. We need to traverse the list, compare each element with the following element, and if the first element is larger, swap the values round and repeat this traversal and swapping over and over again until there are no more swaps. So we're going to write this bit by bit and uh, build up the program, not in um, from line one down, but through building it up. So we're going to start by writing a very simple program that just swaps two elements of a list. Then we're going to put that inside an if block so that the swap only happens if the elements are the wrong way round. Then we're going to put that inside a for loop so that the so that we pass down the entire list. And then we're going to put the whole thing inside a while loop so that it keeps repeating while there are any swaps. So we're actually going to start at the bottom of the program and work backwards. The key to all sort algorithms is swapping. Every sort algorithm requires you to swap values until the list is sorted. And what do we mean by swapping? Pretty obvious. We take the values from two positions in the array and we change the values over. So here, the first two elements in the list are C and A. They're the wrong way round. So we swap them. Element zero becomes A and element one becomes C. We'll look at other programming languages later, but in Python, there's a very easy way to swap two values. It's called tuple substitution. Basically, the first the values are treated as a tuple and then overwritten with a second tuple. But the end result is that the two values are swapped and it's a single line of code. So here, the line of code swaps my list zero and my list one and they become my list one, my list zero. It just means the value swap over of the two elements. So let's just try that out. It's a very simple, single line of code. So write a new Python program, make a list, which is just a list of letters, not in alphabetical order, you can invent it. It, does, it doesn't have to be very long, just a few letters long. Print out the list, swap, the first two elements of the list and print the list again. So it's just like a very, very simple program to show tuple substitution. So pause this video, start Python and write a program that does those three or four things. I'll show you the program on the next screen. So here we are. This is uh, just check that your program works. I've created a list that goes Z, D, A, Q, but obviously your list can be anything. Print it out, swap the first two elements in the list using tuple substitution and print out the list again. Clearly that's not, hasn't sorted the list. It's just the first part of the bubble sort, the swap part. If your program doesn't work or doesn't swap, then copy this program Pause the, pause the video and copy this program. OK, let's carry on with the bubble sort. The next thing we have to do is compare the two elements and only carry out the swap if the first element is bigger than the next element, because then they're the wrong way round. They're not in alphabetical or numerical order. So amend your program so that the swap that you've just written will only happen if element zero is bigger than element one. And don't know if you've done the previous one or not, but the next thing you have to do is put the whole thing that you've written so far inside a for loop 
which will traverse the list from element zero up to uh, the list of the length minus one. We usually traverse right up to the end of a list, but in a, a sort program, we typically traverse up to the length of the list minus one. That's because we're comparing each element with the element that follows. And if we get to the very end of the list, there isn't a, an element that follows, so your program will crash. So you need to create a for loop, put everything that you've written so far inside the for loop, obviously apart from the command that creates the list, but everything goes inside the for loop and do the compare and swap commands go inside the loop. OK, so we've started with a swap. We're putting the swap inside an if command and then we're putting the if command inside a for loop. So I've given you all the clues you need to write this now. I will actually obviously show you the code in a moment or two, but the best thing to do at this point is to pause the lesson go back to your Python program and write everything that we have talked about so far. I mean, literally, what's the worst that can happen? It might not work properly. I'm going to show you the right code in a second anyway. So let's do that for Python practice. And in a second or two, I'll show you the answer. So here's the complete program so far. Create a list. I print it out to show that it's not sorted. For i in range length my list minus one, I already said that. If the value is bigger than the value that follows, then swap them using the tuple substitution and then print the list out. Uh, by the way, this isn't the completed sort yet, but it should run without errors. So make sure that this program works without errors it does not yet fully sort the list. OK, so if you haven't, if that isn't working yet, make sure you've written that code because we're now going to add the final feature of the of the bubble sort, which is to put the whole thing apart from the starting line where we make the starting list, but everything else goes inside a while loop. Remember the checklist for a while loop. Every while loop is controlled by some kind of Boolean expression. And if we want that loop to stop, we've got to include a variable in our Boolean expression so that the truth value can change. In order for our loop to start, we have to give the variable a value before the loop begins. And there has to be something that will change the variable inside the loop. So th these what I've just said there, these factors are true for virtually every time we use a while loop. And unless we just want the loop to go on forever, we've got to have a way of switching it off. So with all that in mind, how are we going to use that to control the bubble sort? So how would we apply this in the case of the bubble sort? Well, we need to create a Boolean va variable called swap, which would be false. And then if there's a if a swap happens, then it, it becomes true and then we'll loop while it's true. So that's quite complicated. You need to switch the variable on and then off and then on again. So see if you can make that work. I'm going to show you the code on the next screen anyway, but you might like to see if you can write that whole program just from that description. If so, give the video a pause. I'll show you the right code on the next slide. So here is the completed bubble sort. We set swaps to true. Uh, to begin so that the while loop will even begin. And then before we traverse the list, we set swaps to false. And then inside the loop, if a swap happens, we set swaps to true. And as long as that's happened even once, the loop will continue. And it's only if we can get right through the whole list with no swaps that will allow the loop to stop. 
So if your program is not quite working right, you can simply swap, copy this code and try it out. Try it out with different lists, long lists, short lists, random lists, and just make sure that you've written a working bubble sort. And there is a variation that some programmers do. Instead of using a Boolean variable, they count the number of swaps. So they use an integer instead of a Boolean uh, variable. So as long as the number of swaps is greater than zero, before the traversal, they set the swaps to zero and then they add one to the number of swaps each time. It has exactly the same effect. It's just interesting to see different programmers will pick a different method to solve a problem. It, it, it doesn't change the program at all, but it's just another way of doing the same thing. So to recap, we saw how to use tuple substitution to swap two values. We put that inside an if structure so that we only swap the values if they were the wrong way round. We put that inside a for loop that traverses the entire list. And then we repeat that over and over again inside a while loop. And if you've done all of those stages, you've written the bubble sort. So here are some Python exercises. Write the bubble sort and uh, Write the bubble sort program that I've just shown you in this lesson and make it make sure it works. Test that it's working by writing a program that creates random lists, lists of random numbers or I guess random letters and sorts them into order. And a challenge to you is to see if you can work out how many operations it takes to sort a list using the bubble sort. Try running the list, counting it, and outputting the number of the number of loops or the number of swaps that it has taken to complete the bubble sort. So we'll look at some variations of the bubble sort in the next lesson. So bye for now.